Hello and welcome to another Silverbird Selection Game Review. Today I'm taking a look at a Silver Range game from 1986 called Twinkie Goes Hiking. I've got this rated as a rarity level of uncommon, not too many copies out there, and my copy cost me 79p, which probably means I got it as part of a bundle many, many years ago. So, let's get our hiking boots on and join Twinkie going hiking. Let's start off with a quick look at the packaging then. Typical Silver Range packaging, which you must be well used to by now. Reasonably attractive image on the front cover there. There's Twinkie, who's a rather rotund character with big eyes and big arms and a big nose uh, in his hiking gear. And as you can see, it says there, Twinkie goes hiking. Spine's got that logo on as well, which is nice and cartoony and colourful. Back cover, uh, got a nice smiley sun in the corner there. A couple of screenshots which look almost identical. Uh, you can see it's a split screen kind of game. And it says on the overview there, race Twinkie to the top of the mountain in this superb one or two player game. So it looks like it's got a simultaneous two player mode. Now moving inside you can see it looks like somebody has cut off the application form for the Silver Club there because that page is missing. And you can quite clearly see some cut marks there so we don't really care about that anyway at this point in the series so here are the instructions Twinkie goes hiking copyright 1986 R Lowenstein and it says bounding across the landscape comes Twinkie and his twin brother Reg these two lads are outdoor sports fanatics keen on competing with each other at cross-country racing run through the rough alpine terrain which can be hazardous with pitfalls rocks rivers and wild animals all presenting potential obstacles that need to be avoided uh, goes on to say you can collect stuff to top up your energy, food and stuff like that. And at the end of the course, the winner will attain the affection of the ever vivacious darling Twinker. May the best man win. We then got some loading instructions and pretty simplistic gameplay instructions. One or two players using joysticks reach Twinker before your opponent. Uh, obstacles can be jumped by pressing the fire button for a small jump or pushing the joystick up for a big jump. And it goes on to say you may select the level of skill of the computer opponent when selecting the options before starting the game. And that's pretty much it for the instructions. Here we have the loading screen for the game then. Nice and colourful. Slightly different representation of Twinkie there than the one on the front cover. Nice big Firebird logo and you can see on Twinkie's backpack it says Sir 86 which means this is a loading screen done by Stephen Robertson who did many loading screens for Firebird and other companies. Pretty nice and colourful loading screen there, no issue with that whatsoever. Okay, so here's the title screen and it's quite an assault on the senses. You've got a very colourful logo at the top there with the mountain in the background. You've got a scrolling message with the usual sort of stuff with the author thanking people and things like that. And then in the panel in the middle you've got Twinkie bouncing across the screen, saying various messages here. You can see it says hello you, yes you're in front of the TV why don't you start uh, and also there's the music which is also an assault on the senses but not in a good way uh, it's really bad it's like noisy annoying repetitive and uh, I'm afraid you'll be hearing that in game as well uh, and finally for the title screen you've got this bar at the bottom where you can choose between playing the game reading the instructions and looking at the game options so let's start by looking at the instructions which is mostly just a repeat of what was in the inlay Avoid all opponents by jumping or bending, or whatever that means. Uh, oh, and I don't know what happened there, I skipped a page there, let's try that again. There we go. Uh, eat a hamburger to get some strength and a heart to get more points you have ever seen. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but there you go. And, oh wow, it's really hard to skip through these instructions. There we go, and that was the last page. Oh well, I wish I hadn't even bothered looking at that again now. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, and then there's also some game options. Um, Screen one, oh, okay. <laughs> Screen one, human, or how do you change this? Oh, there you go, okay. So you can be human or Commodore 64 on the first screen. Uh, obviously, that's computer players. It looks like it's got different difficulty levels based on the three dashes. So we'll leave that as human, and then the second one we'll make Commodore 64 uh, level one. Why not? And I guess that does that. So all that remains is to start the game. Okay, so here's the game, and as you can see, it's a race between me on the top and the opposition player on the bottom. And you've got to race along this uh, course and try not to hit anything. 
uh, which I failed to do. I've hit that thing. So there's things like iguanas to uh, jump over scorpions. There's also holes in the ground and various other obstacles. On this level, you can't actually oh, hit the hole again. You can't accelerate or decelerate on this stage. Now, all you can do is jump up by a big jump by pushing up, um, a small jump by pressing fire, and uh, you can also crouch, which I'm not sure if serves much purpose on this level or not. I'm going to hit that corner now, aren't I? Yep. Um, so it's all just a timing thing. It's like a kind of early endless runner, I suppose, with timing. Or well, my opponent's already lost all their lives. So you've got um, strength, which I think is just lives. Um, there's some kind of, oh, there's a health bar as well, which is diminishing slightly. Uh, and you've also got a little dash on the sort of status panel, which is telling you how close you are to the end of the level. I think I'm getting there. There I am, I've made it to the end. That no music is just nauseatingly bad. So on this level, you're now going up the hill and you've got to jump over things again. Uh, this is one, oh, fell in a hole, great. That hole looks too big to jump. So this is the one where you can accelerate. No, I just can't make it over that hole. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to. Nope, I don't get it. There's just no way to clear that hole. I'm doing, I'm going as fast as I can with the biggest jump that I can, and I still can't make it over. Oh, I've made it. Oh, okay, you have to wait till you're right at the edge. No, I'm in the hole again. There, that's hard. And there we go. That's game over. I got a colossal 280 points. Uh, so now. Uh, it's all gone a bit crazy here. The graphics at the top have all got mixed up, uh, and the bars at the bottom, uh, where with the three options, seem to have vanished. So let's just go back to the instructions. Oh, no, that's just started the game again now. What the hell? Seems to be a little bit buggy. So let's give it another go. See if we can get any further. It is just about timing. Sometimes you've got to use a smaller jump to get over something or you've got to time the jump so that you land just in time to, to jump over the next obstacle. Uh, I think the levels are somewhat randomly generated in terms of the things that come at you and the objects of which. The bouncing ball, by the way, you can just like collide with that. There you go, I've done it first time. My opponent's still making their way through as well. Oh no, they've, they've died. I guess you've got to wait for them to finish even though it's all about who finished first, it's obviously playing the second player as a, a proper player, even though it's controlled by the computer. They've only got one life left though. They seem to be able to walk through the scorpion then as well, which didn't seem very fair. But yeah, that bouncing ball does absolutely nothing as far as I can tell. So let's move on to the second stage, the uphill stage again. Let's see how we get on this time. Hopefully, that's a hamburger to collect by the way, which I've managed to do, which restores your health. Yeah, you can definitely see the layout of this is different because there's uh, snakes, I guess they are. It's not going too badly here. Very repetitive. And there's a heart there to collect and that gap is a hell of a lot smaller. This is going quite well, I'm going to hit that pile of rocks there though. Don't know if it respawns you right at the beginning or if you respawn some of the way through. It's hard to tell. No, I'm going to hit that rock there. I don't think it respawned me right at the end. So right at the start, I should say. So yeah, again, those birds that are flying at you don't do you any harm at all. I'm going to hit that rock again. I'm not learning from my mistakes at all here. So now the heart spawned there, which wasn't there before. No, I'm going to hit the rock again. I just can't get past it. It's all about timing the landing. There we go, got past it that time. Okay, another snake, another rock. It's all a bit uh, repetitive. No, I'm gonna hit the rock again. Oh, that's annoying. I was close that time. It does seem like it sends you right back to the beginning on this one, whereas I don't think it did on the first level. Uh, I haven't really talked about the graphics, which are quite nice, uh, chunky 
um, well defined, cute main sprite and some of the enemies are quite nicely done as well. Uh, oh, do I want to go through this again? Go on, let's give it one more go. I'd like to be able to try and get past it. No, that's... Oh, I survived that. I'm surprised there. I'd like to be able to... Oh, dear. To uh, get past the second stage and show the third stage. So, yeah, as I was saying, the graphics pretty nice. Um, small, but quite nicely defined. We've got sort of the black borders around most of the sprites, which give her a nice definition. Um, they're, they're fairly repetitive. You know, there's only so many different things you're going to see on the screen, but I think they're pretty decent. Certainly the main character is cute. There we go, that's the first level completed again. Let's give the second stage a shot. Interesting how it just shows like a big blue screen full of junk between stages. Uh, I think it's fair to say it's not the most well programmed thing. Oh, we've got trees this time, which you've got to duck under. So there's definitely random generation of the levels, no doubt there. That waterfall is quite nicely uh, drawn and animated. This looks hard to get across. Oh, but I've done it. The heart gives you a big points boost. Uh, the hamburgers, wow, this looks tricky. Oh, that was close, actually. I think I need to do is a small jump. Uh, after the two rocks, just need to remember to actually do that. Um, it's, it's fair to say it's pretty boring and repetitive gameplay wise. There's not much to write home about. Perhaps as a two player game, it might offer a little bit more. Oh, I've done it. Can I get to the top here? I'm not far off the end. I have. Nice. At least you get to see the third stage, whatever that is. So strange. What is going on here? Oh, okay, it's, it's, it was just a delay. Wow, okay. More things bouncing down the hill at you, but they don't seem to do you any harm at all. It's only the rocks and the, uh, the ground-based obstacles that seem to do you any harm on this stage. This is actually proving to be much easier than the previous level so far. There's no doubt something going to trip me up in a minute, literally trip me up. No, I've actually got to the end on my first shot. Well, there you go, we're going to see level four then now as well. What on earth is going on now? It's just making a load of weird noises. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> it's a really strange game. Whoa, we're in a cave or something now. What is that? That's like a pit of lava. As you can probably guess, I've never got this far before. What the hell happened there? I don't know what happened there. Obviously, hits. Oh, okay, it's like steps. Oh dear. No, I'm straight in the lava puddle there. Looks like it resets your lives between stages as well. So I've, I've got five lives again. But I'm uh, well. In oh, okay, I hit the spike at the top. That's what happened last time. Okay, so a little bit more challenging on this stage. Let's see if we can watch out for that spike. There we go. What? I don't know what happened. I just don't understand what's going on there. I don't know how I can get past that. It seems to be uh, impossible to get past. And I think that's the problem with randomly generated levels is that sometimes you get obstacles that you just can't avoid. Yeah, I just hit that spike after jumping over that rock. So it's not going to last too much longer. And you're probably glad to hear that based on the god-awful racket of the sound effect. No, hit the spike again. And is that game over? It is game over. I can't say I'm too disappointed about that. Okay, so we've definitely seen and heard enough of this game. Let's get on with the review scores. Packaging I thought was pretty nice. Nice image on the front cover and the instructions are reasonably detailed. Nothing outstanding, but it's, you know, better than average. So let's give that a 7 out of 10. Presentation, well, initially when it loaded, it was really nice. With the info across the bottom of the screen, the different options. Uh, lots of stuff going on, on the title screen. 
and the uh, image at the top all very nice and then it all gets a bit corrupted after one game well let's go with how it looks originally nice presentation overall I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 one thing I should mention though is it records your score but there's no high score table or any high score stuff so as soon as your score vanishes off the screen it's gone forever that's a bit of a shame moving on to the in-game graphics I think they're nice too this is another one of those reviews where I'm just saying everything's nice for some reason I don't know why I've started doing that but yeah good graphics well defined simple you might say but effective I like them I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10 uh, sound though is pretty abysmal it's just this awful tune uh, so I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10 and finally playability uh, well it's maybe got a bit more interest as a two player game as a one player game it's literally just run along jump over stuff try and avoid stuff and get to the end of the level very simple controls very simple idea for a game and it soon gets pretty boring and quite frustrating so I'm going to give the playability 4 which gives the game an overall score of 6.1 and I would say it's not really worth the money it's obviously a bit glitchy the music's horrendous and the gameplay is quite boring so yeah not worth 199 for my reckoning so there you go that's my thoughts on Twinkie Goes Hiking if you've got any thoughts about it then please let me know in the comments and I'll be back with another game review in the near future thanks for watching and see you at the next one